Please be seated. Good morning, Rancho Bernardo. Good morning. Welcome into the presence of God. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the day when we remember on the last Sunday of the church calendar that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And so we bow our heads and celebrate his goodness to us. We lift our voices and sing his praise. And as we gather together then, let's start with this call to worship. I invite you to join me. Our thoughts of you, O Lord, have been too small, too few, for seldom have we considered how specific is the exercising of your authority, extending as it does into the myriad particulars of creation. As you hear these words, I want to invite you to imagine we have torn the roof off of this building, and we are saying this to the world. Christ, you are the snow king. You are the maker of all weathers. You are the king of sunlight and storms, the king of gray skies and rain. You are the rain king, the sun king, the hurricane king. You are the king of autumn and king of spring. You are the Lord of the harvest, the grain king, the wine king, the God of plenty, the God of hearth and home. You are the hill king, the wild flower king, king of the great bears, king of the canyons. For your claim over creation is vast. You are the Lord of Antarctica, the King of California, the King of the Scottish Hills, the King of the Nile. You are the weaver of the unseen fabrics of the world. You are the Lord of atoms, the ruler of electrons, the Lord of gravity, the King of quarks. You are the God of justice, the God of wisdom, the God of mercy the God of redemption. You were before all things. You created all things. And in you, all things are held together. There is no corner of creation you will fail to redeem. Still, our thoughts of you have been too small, too few. You are the Lord of lords, King of kings, Lord of Jesus Christ. Let's say that one more time with a little bit of verve. <laughs> you are the Lord of lords and King of kings. Oh, Jesus Christ, our King of everything. Let's pray. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, of thou, of God and man the Son, you will we cherish, you will we honor. Thou, our soul's glory, joy, and crown. Amen. My friends, fair are the meadows, fairer still the woodlands, robed in the blooming garb of spring. Jesus is fairer. Jesus is purer, who makes the woeful heart to sing. Fair is the sunlight, fairer still the moonlight, and all the twinkling starry host. Jesus is fairer. Jesus is purer than all the angels heaven can boast. Let's sing.
Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light of my path. Awaken our senses to hear and understand your truths and promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture lesson is John 14, verses 5 through 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone has see- who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you so much. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music today. When I travel and I'm like on a plane and I'm seated next to somebody, there's times when people want to talk. <laughs> and a lot of times they start with, uh, so what do you do? And I, I know I have a decision to make at that moment. And this decision comes down to essentially like, do I want to talk? Do I want to talk or do I not want to talk? And so uh, if I want to talk, I'll say to them, well, I'm a writer. I'm a student. I'm a researcher. I'll use one of those. And, and that's all true. I do all those things. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll immediately open up the conversation. Oh, what do you write? Have I ever read anything you might have written? Probably not. You know, what are you studying? What do you research? You know, that kind of thing. And, um, and I'll tell them about an article I've read or something. Uh, but if I'm not really interested in talking, like if I'm really interested in just sleeping on the plane, I'll, I'll say, well, I'm an O. And they say, an O? What's an O? And I say, well, I'm a Presbyterian minister. And they go, oh, oh. <laughs> and then they don't want to talk. It's a funny thing about us that, like, we want to get to the destination. If I know what you do, I can frame my picture about you. I'm done. Like, th that's what you do, that's what you are. And I want to lift up a couple of words that we've been using over the fall and the uh, end of the summer that are about something else. The first word is saunter. You may have noticed that we had the little table out there with uh, more of these little stones to have saunter on one side and walk on the other. We, we used these toward the beginning of the fall and we reminded ourselves that saunter comes from the words a la santer, to the holy land, which was the answer that pilgrims would give when they uh, were on their way and someone would ask, where are you going, a la santer? They're going to the holy land and that became our word saunter. And the idea of sauntering is that we walk with a gentle pace, we walk unafraid. We walk to a destination, though. We're going somewhere, even though it's going to take a little while. Now, the word embark, uh, we haven't used that often. And uh, it's on a banner outside of the upper parking lot. And so you may have noticed it if you've ever pulled in there. But we just, we, there was an article about it in the, in the newsletter, and we brought it up a, a once or twice, but it really was just to have it in the back of our minds. It was just a thought that we'd just be reminded of that we are embarking, we're underway. We're going out on this journey, an adventure. And you put those two words together, sauntering and embarking, and we're, we're on our way into a process, a journey, which will take us into an adventure that we don't know that we won't be able to predict what will be included. So we want to explore. We want to take our time. We want to see what's around us. So I want to, I want to uh, encourage you to join with me in a little call and response as I go through my message today. I'll say, no worries, and you say, no hurries. <laughs> okay, no worries. And so as we go through this, as you hear that, uh, just respond to it. John Muir, the uh, naturalist who uh, helped create the Sierra Club and started the, helped start the uh, national park system and trails all over the country. John Muir said he didn't like the word hike. He didn't like the word hike. He said people who use that word tend to want to get along the path as fast as they can and get to the camp first. He said he preferred the word saunter. And he knew where the word came from. He knew that it meant to the Holy Land. He said, I use that word because I want to remind myself that there is so much to see, so much to hear, so much to breathe in. No worries. I want to lift up these words because 
the reason we don't hurry or worry is because we are walking with God. We are walking with God. And we're paying attention to what God is showing us as we, as we move along. I want to encourage you then to think about having the perspective of going to a destination without needing to get there. <laughs> if you get that, we're going to a destination without needing to get there. So many times we work on the process of getting there that we don't pay attention to what's along the way. And what we're saying is that even though we may stop, we may explore, we may get into an adventure, we're gonna go through it all comfortably, unafraid. You see, that's the point. The point is walking with God. The goal of the Christian life is walking with God. The goal is not getting to heaven. We've been, we've been told that the point of Jesus was to get us into heaven. But the point of Jesus was to get us with God. Jesus cleared away everything that would get us, get between us and God so that we could get with him, so that we could be with him here and now. The point is to walk with God. Because God's the one who's gonna show us what's important. God's the one who's gonna talk to us and tell us what we should pay attention to. God is gonna show us where the adventures are as we move toward God's country, a la Santer. So, no worries. We're with God, and we move with God. We are to be on the way, because as we are on the way, that will lead us into the truth, which will then become the life we live. Did you get that? We are to be on the way, so that the way reveals the truth that then becomes the way we live. See, the point of Jesus is that he is the way. Him saying, no one comes to the Father except through me, is that this is the way that one gets with God. This is the way, because it leads us into the truth, which becomes then the life we live so we can relax, we can be with God. No worries. worries. Let me tell you about Helen. I became the permanent pastor at a a church in Pennsylvania. And as the new pastor, I was uh, given the list of people in the hospital. And so within the first few days of, of arriving, I went to visit Helen, who was in the hospital. She was 90 years old, and Helen had gotten ill but was now recovering. And the uh, hospital staff had told her that she would be uh, uh, ready to go home within a couple of days, a couple of days. I walked in, introduced myself, and shared that I was the uh, new pastor, and she lit into me. (laughs) Why wasn't she dead yet? (laughs) Why was God keeping her alive? What was the point? She was 90 years old. Her husband had died 10 years ago. She was ready to die. She was ready to go. Why was God keeping her alive? As an astute pastor, (laughs) with many years of experience, I gave her the clearest answer I could. I said, I have no idea. (laughs) I said, but you are alive. I said, And if you are alive, God can still use you. In what possible way can God use me? This is this little tiny person sitting, laying in this bed, shouting at me. I'm 90 years old. What could God possibly do with me now? I came back to my original answer. I have no idea. (laughs) However, 
You're going to get out of your bed and back home, and you're going to come to church, so why don't you just look around and see what looks interesting to you? Just take in what's around you. So she did. She began to explore. And she discovered that there were things she could actually do, even as a 90-year-old. She became an usher. She became, uh, she started helping with a couple of ministries. She discovered that she had an understanding of things that other people didn't, and they were willing to hear what she had to say. I learned that her entire adult life had been spent working as a chemist. And then a little later on, I learned that there was another woman in our church who was also in her 90s, who, was, who had also spent her adult life as a chemist. So I asked them if they knew each other. Turned out they were best friends. <laughs> Helen and Edith. They were best friends. They had discovered each other at work when they were in their 20s. And the thing that had united them was that they had discovered that each of them had come to faith in God by studying the periodic table. <laughs> like, for real? They had studied the periodic table and come to faith by realizing this couldn't just happen. God had to be there. And that united them, united them as 20-somethings. And that lasted for 70 years. It was after that time that my associate pastor in that church asked if they would be willing to be interviewed in front of the congregation at our worship services and to share how their friendship had influenced their walk with God. So they did. They were delightful, the two of them. They were like girls chatting with each other in front of us. And at the end of it, we had high schoolers who came and asked, how could they have a friendship like that? And Helen said, it's easy, just do it for 70 years. <laughs> when Helen died at the age of 96, not only has she impacted the church, not only had she influenced an entire generation of people there to think about their walk with God, but she had fallen in love and decided to get married again. <laughs> Helen ended her life with this deep satisfaction and happiness because at 90, she had decided to start walking with God again. She had decided to do what she had done all of her life. She was a chemist. She had decided to investigate. She had decided to see what happens when you put things together. She had decided to discover, to explore. She had decided to walk with God. We are so caught with the destination. Rather than paying attention to the journey. Frank Zappa, and having getten to, gotten to know you somewhat, I, I realize you all are big Zappa fans. <laughs> Frank Zappa once said, you are what you is. <laughs> and the thing about that is that gets us into the gospel. That gets us into the gospel because the good news of Jesus Christ is you is children of God. You is people who follow God. That's who you is. You're people who are apprentices, who are paying attention to what God is doing in the world. There's a Christian philosopher whose name is Dallas Willard. And Willard said, the greatest issue facing the world today with all its heartbreaking needs is whether those who are identified as Christians will become disciples, students, apprentices, practitioners of Jesus Christ, steadily learning from him 
to live the life of the kingdom of the heavens into every corner of human existence. He said the main thing God gets out of your life is not the achievements you accomplish, but the person you become. The main thing that God gets out of your life is not the achievements you accomplish, but the person you become. Discipleship is the process of becoming who Jesus would be if he were you. The point is not heaven. The point is the way. The point is the king of heaven, to spend time with the king of heaven, the king of life. The point is Jesus. You see, the reason we don't hurry is because we want to pay attention. It's not to say that there aren't times when we need to hurry. I mean, when our daughter Kate was just a little over one years old, she spilled a hot cup of tea onto herself, brand new hot cup of tea. My drive to that hospital put my goals, my needs right up front. They, they were the most important thing. But not everything is an emergency. Not everything is trying to get down this path, get over these hills, get past the stream to get to the camp so we can set up. Not everything is an emergency. We are called to saunter, to go to God's country. But the thing about that is that when we get with God, heaven, eternal life, has already started. It's already started when we're with God. This is why Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. The way he actually said it was, right in front of me somewhere, Nope. The way he said it was, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who lives in me will never die. He said this, so that we would understand that we are walking with him and that that's the goal. So as we move ahead, take in, see, hear, breathe in. What is around you? Who is around you? Who is with you? Because we have a destination. We are going to get there as a community. We are gonna walk though into life. And as we walk into life, we are gonna walk with God. And as we walk with God, we will have no worries. And all God's people said, amen. amen. We're gonna have a baptism. And there are some people here who have been waiting for this all throughout the service. Well done. Um, we're going to baptize, we're gonna invite the, you all up here right now.
These are the Andersons. You met them last week as they were introduced as new members of the church. Mike and Catherine with their girls and with Robert. Stay right there, right where you are. And we are going to walk back to the baptismal bowl. Back there, if you would go with Joyce, I'm going to just share with you all just a reminder that our baptismal bowl sits at the back of the church outside of the seating area. And the point of that is that it's outside the people of God. We get to confess that we believe in Jesus. We get to be baptized in Jesus' name. And then we are brought into the people of God, into the community of faith. And you all will uh, join with us at that point. But you'll be able to see what's going on on the screen. Hey, Robert, can I hold you? Would that be okay? What do you think? No? You're okay. You're okay. So, Catherine and Michael, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Do you believe in him? Yes. Do you promise to be his disciple throughout your life? I do. Do you promise to raise this little guy to come to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior? And if you would step over here. Robert Michael, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you all of your days. Robert Michael, your name means, it's a question, who is as bright and famous as God? (laughs) Who is as bright and famous as God? What a great thing you will be able to answer that question with your life. And we pray that for you. Let's pray together. Dearest friend, unite with this little guy. Join him. Carry him into your presence. Celebrate with him. Bring him to you, we pray, throughout all the days of his life. Help him to know you and deeply trust you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Come on forward, please. Blessings be upon you, precious baby. May favor rest upon your family. May your future be a holy legacy. May blessings be upon you, precious baby. Blessings be upon you, precious baby. May favor rest upon your family. May your future be a holy legacy. May blessings be upon you, precious This is a song that was sung uh, for other baptisms in your family. Yes. Yeah, so this was a special request. Joyce, if you would. Yes. Will all members of this and any other Christian congregation please stand? In baptizing children, we as a congregation are also making a commitment to God as well as to this child. Do we, the people of God, promise to tell the ongoing story of God's grace and love to Robert? Do we promise to pray for him, to serve our Lord in such a way as to help Robert grow in the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ? 
do we promise by our word and deed to encourage Robert to know, follow, and serve Jesus Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. Thank you. You may be seated. It is the custom in this church to give a prayer quilt to each child in celebration of their baptism. You are invited to tie a prayer knot in Robert's quilt in the courtyard following the service. Hey, Robert. Thank you. Please make sure to uh, knot the quilt as you go out. Thank you all. God bless. Let's have a quick prayer. Lord God, we pray for this family as we pray for all families that you would rejoice over them but also protect them. Care for them and keep them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Please have a seat. We have just a couple more things in the, uh, in the life of the church. The first thing is to also welcome another new member. So Mike, are you here? There is. Mike has been uh, here at this church for a period of time. How long have you been coming to the church? Uh, 20 years. 20 years. So <laughs> we're, we're glad he's a member now. <laughs> Mike, I want to have a prayer with you as well. So please uh, join me. Dearest friend, we thank you for this friend of yours who is committed to you, who loves you, and who is following you. We pray your blessing on him, that you would unite with his spirit as well, that you would guide him all of his days, that you would speak deeply into his heart of your love and your enjoyment of him as he is, and that you would carry him into your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Thank you. Welcome. Finally then, I just want to remind you of our Advent brochure to pick one up and share it with a friend. It'll tell you everything that's coming up as we enter this season uh, starting next week. Thank you. Well, as we approach Thanksgiving, we have many things to thank the Lord for. So as we come and bring our offerings with us, let us give all the praises to God who blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings. And as we bring our offerings, please remember to fill up the connection card if you are new here or you have something would like us to share with us. Please fill up the connection card and leave it on the offering plate. Please join me in prayer. Praise the Lord, O my soul and forgot none of his benefits. We give the praises to you, O Lord, that in Christ you blessed us, and in him you brought us together to worship you. We come to you, and the offerings in our hands. So we pray, O Lord, that you may use it, and use each one of us in the work in your kingdom. We pray that in the name of Jesus, amen. Ashers, please come forward.
As we come to the Lord in prayer, I would like to remind us all, please pray for those among us who are ill. If you know of anyone who is sick and the church is not aware of, please call the church and let us know. As you walk from the sanctuary doors toward the fellowship center in your right hand side, you'll see a board there and there is paper when you can, a card, you take it with you names of people among us who ask to pray for them. Please consider to pray for these people every day in your daily devotion time. We take prayer seriously and we trust the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Great and Heavenly Father, as we come to you and we listen to the message that we walk with you. We listen to the Bible, inviting all of us, looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. As we look unto Jesus, we confess, O oh Lord, that many times in our life we get busy. We worry about what we eat and what we drink. We worry about tomorrow and what tomorrow brings. But we come to you, and as we confess our sins, we listen to the Bible who assure us that even we sin, even we fill in the road, your hand, O Lord, will raise us up. Thank you for the assurance that you forgive our sins. Lord, in our journey, we give the praises to you that you give us the written word, which is the light for our path. 
You give us the incarnate word of God, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to come to him every day in our journey. Lord, many times we act like the disciples of Emmaus, as Christ was walking with them, yet their eyes were closed, they could not see him. Until Christ shared the bread and opened their hand, their eyes. Lord, open our eyes, so we may see you in our life. We may see you as the good shepherd who lead us every day and guide us every day with your rod and staff. We see you, O Lord, in our life as the king. You are the one who above all of us help us and open our eyes to see you, the one who redeemed us, ransomed us, the one who bought us by his own blood. We belong to you. So Lord, as we walk, we come to you, O Lord, with all our needs among your people, those who worry about tomorrow, those who are sick, those who go through a grief journey, we come closer to the thanksgiving. And as we come to the table, some of us will see an empty seat there because a beloved one departed from earth to the final destination to home. Lord, we pray that you will be with them to comfort them to bless all of us as we look unto you, O Lord, for help. Thank you that in our journey you promise to be with us all the days until the end of the ages. We pray that in Jesus' name who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
As uh, most of you know, but some of you may not, we have an Arabic-speaking uh, congregation that is part of our church, and Mofid leads that service. Uh, they normally, in the fall, have an Arabian Nights, a uh, chance to celebrate their, the ministry and to, um, and to also uh, learn more about it. They are not having that this year. And so, instead, uh, you will be able to go out and discover uh, in the courtyard information and guidance and also some food. Baklava. Baklava. <laughs> and to celebrate uh, with them and to learn more about the ministry. Let me just pray about that, okay? Yeah, thank you. Good and gracious God, we thank you that we have a community of faith that extends around the world, that people who know you and love you everywhere, of every race, celebrate your name. And today, we celebrate that right here, with different languages and different backgrounds, we all gather in your presence and celebrate your love. Watch over this ministry that is here as part of this church, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I'd like to remind us all, the prayer team will be up front, and they'll be happy to pray with you. And as we go out, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you all. Amen.